You should know from watching this channel that the key to making power are the camshaft, cylinder heads, and intake manifold. And as important as they are on like a 5 liter 302, they're even more important on a 347. In this video, I've got two tests for you. Both run on 347 stroker 5 liter fours. I've got a Brodex head test and an intake test. Then I've got trick flow heads as cast versus CNC ported. Lots of cool stuff to cover. Let's get going. Right cylinder heads and intake manifold are important for any application, but especially for a stroker application. As well as they work on a good 302, they're even better and more important on a larger 347. So to illustrate this, I built a 347, and it was your typical kind of deal. 3.4 inch stroker crank, 5.4 inch rods, and forged flat top pistons with valve release to allow us to run you know, enough camshaft in this thing. Speaking of camshaft, we ran a stroker cam, which is appropriate for our stroker combination. It was a comp uh, XFI cam designed for stroker applications. 579 lift, 236, 248 degree duration split, and 114 degree lobe separation angle. So our sharp block basically had everything it needed. Now it just needed the like air, airflow portion of the equation. But instead of giving it good heads, <laughs> we installed a set of stock E7TE heads on it, which are obviously it's not advisable, but we want to demonstrate what the gains offered by the cylinder head upgrade and then an intake upgrade. So we installed the factory E7TE heads, and what I did was we did a valve spring upgrade on them because obviously a stock head with a stock spring is not going to work with that much camshaft. So we had to do a spring upgrade on it. We also installed roller rockers on it and the right size and the right length push rod. We then topped that with an Edelbrock RPM air gap intake and a 750 Holley also an MSD distributor, and naturally we dialed everything in with jetting and timing to make sure that it made the most power that it could. We also ran through a set of uh, Fox chassis inch and three quarter hooker super comp headers. So all that worked well. So equipped with our stock heads, our 347 inch stroker produced 351 horsepower and 395 foot pounds of torque. And the fact that it made so much more torque than horsepower tells you, hey, <laughs> something's not happy here something's not working out we have enough displacement we have a good camshaft we haven't have a good intake manifold so the big problem is actually the cylinder heads so what we did to cure that was install I said Brodex heads and the Brodex heads <laughs> I wish they would um, change their naming strategy and pick something that's easier to remember and easier to differentiate but they make really good products uh, these heads were a KC LH 17 and they are 195 cc intake port they were cnc ported they had a 17 degree valve angle they had a 20216 valve package and a 60 cc combustion chamber and they flowed almost 300 cfm so these were really good heads and well suited to this 347. so here's what happened when we installed the brodix heads still with the same rpm air gap intake manifold the power output jumped substantially to 460 horsepower, technically 459.5, but we rounded up. 435 foot-pounds of torque, and as you can see, it gained power everywhere, even down at 3,000 RPM. So this size port, compared to the factory one, which is tiny and flows nothing, um, you don't have to worry about low-speed power with, with port size. I've done a bunch of testing with that, and at least at wide open throttle, it's not a tremendous issue. But on this 347, after looking at it and thinking, hey, that RPM air gap is working well, but I think what this combination really needs is a single plane. It's got enough displacement, it's certainly got enough head flow, and it's got enough camshaft. So I'd kind of like to see what a single plane does. So what we did was install a, a really good intake manifold, and I've run it a bunch. It's a Parker Funnel Web single plane intake and if you've got the hood clearance for it or you don't care about the hood clearance it is certainly a high rise intake but it works very well as we'll see here so here's what happened when i installed the funnel web same carburetor and stuff picked up a lot of power i mean we made almost 500 498.7 peak torque was up just slightly to 441 foot pounds it just shifted out so as we've come to expect from a single plane versus a dual plane the single plane made more power from about 4,800 RPM on out, all the way out past redline. And the dual plane made more power down below that. So it, obviously it depends on what you want to do, where, where the power production is more important for you. But the single plane on this worked really well. And it shows, you know, if you've got a good 347 stroker, you put the right cam in it, a good set of heads, and the right intake manifold, good things can happen and it'll make a lot of power. Let's check out our next combo. 
Not that the first test on the 347 wasn't enough because there's a lot of good information there, but I wanted to give you guys a second test here, and it's actually on a set of as cast heads versus a set of CNC heads. Now, both those heads were made by TrickFlow, and they make an excellent piece, and we've used it a lot. And they kind of helped revolutionize the uh, 5 liter Ford industry with that original twisted wedge head, and it worked really well. I mean, it, it, <laughs> there are guys going really fast, and that's actually how I first met Brian Tooley, as a matter of fact. So there's a, there's a cool story that I might share with you one time with that. But on this test, we've got a 347 stroker, very similar to the other motor. It had a flat top piston that came from the guys at Coast High Performance. You know, 3.4 inch stroke, 5.4 rod, flat top piston, valve reliefs. It even had dual valve reliefs so that we could run twisted wedge heads on it, which is kind of cool. Allows us to run inline heads and the twisted wedge heads. We installed the exact same cam in it, the Extreme Energy XFI cam, which was the 579 lift. 236, 248 degree duration split, and 114 degree LSA. And that's quickly becoming my Extreme Energy 274 HR cam for stroker applications because it, it works really well. And it's sized just enough so that it's healthy and makes a lot of power, but you still can drive it around, especially on a 347 and also on a 408. And they, they make a bigger version for the bigger strokers too, so you could step up to that. But this is a really good cam, hydraulic roller, kind of set it and forget it, which is pretty nice. Now in this combination, we we started off with the standard ASCAS twisted wedge heads, which work really well. We ran the twisted wedge uh, aluminum roller rockers on it, and then we equipped this with an RPM air gap, which is an interesting thing because I also have a single plane intake that we tested on this with different results <laughs> than we saw in the last test. So we ran it with a 750 Holley and long tube headers and an MSD and all that stuff. So equipped with the ASCAS head, our stroker produced 458 horsepower and 419.7 or 420 foot-pounds of torque. So it was doing pretty well. And if we take a look at our math from our previous test, if you haven't seen that video uh, where, where I cal calculate the horsepower versus the airflow, um, check it out. But what we know is that if we know what the airflow is of the cylinder head, we can get an idea of how much power it will support. So a stock twisted wedge head flows somewhere between 245 and 250 CFM, which means if we double that number, which is what we do for our formula, that head will actually support about 500 horsepower. So this is still within the range of what that stock head will support. Now, obviously, it takes more motor to be able to support that number, but it will support this power level. The reason I bring that up is because we installed a set of 185 CNC ported twisted wedge heads from Triclo, for which are a great head, and we've used it a lot and made lots of power with them. And we got this kind of gain. Now, we did pick up quite a bit of power. Power jumped up to 482 horsepower. But the question now is, and what it should be for a lot of people is, is it worth getting that CNC ported head on this 347 at this power level? As I said, the stock head, the ASCAST head, can flow enough to support the power level. We did pick up a little bit of power from the ported head, which is good, but the problem is, and I, I'm guilty of this too, especially when I was young, when I first started this off 25 years ago or so, because you know that's back when you're young, you know everything. So if we put a set of heads on and we tested it back to back on the dyno like you do, and it didn't do anything, oh, those heads are crappy, those heads suck, I would never get those. <laughs> But we're not looking at the whole picture. We're not looking at the airflow. We're not looking at the fact that we have a set of heads that will support 500 horsepower on a 300 horsepower head. So when we put the 600 horsepower heads on there, they didn't do anything. And it's not the fault of the head. It's the fault of the guy <laughs> assembling the combination and deciding what works and what doesn't just arbitrarily. So luckily, I've grown and learned from that. And, and it's important. But it's the same thing that's happening here. We have a head, the ASCAST head works well on this combination. It has enough flow, it supports it. We pick up a little bit of power with the ported head, which can support a lot more power. I mean, it can support 550 or 600 horsepower. So we basically just need more motor <laughs> to go under that head to take advantage of it. But the one cool thing I did, especially after seeing the results of the Brodix deal, is we ran a single plane intake on it. Um, I didn't have a Victor Jr., which would kind of be my go-to thing, or the funnel web, which I didn't have that at the time. So we installed a, a no-name <laughs> Chinese brand uh, kind of combination here. And when we put the single plane on there, let's see here. 
So we put the single plane on the as cast one, and um, you can see it's in the red here. Basically, it didn't gain any power at the top, and all it did was manage to lose a ton of torque down low. And that's just not a good <laughs> that's just not a good choice, which is why we stayed with the RPM air gap. Now I do think like with the Brodix deal, if we put a funnel web on here, we would probably see at least the same kind of you know trade off. We'd see less down low and more up top. So it'd be then that would be a good combination. But you know, this was a good 347. Both of those trick flow heads are good. You could make a lot more power with the ported one. So you'd have to decide if, hey, this is enough power, especially since I save a bunch of money by not going with the CNC ported head. I can do the as cast one. And then the other option for a lot of guys is you can take that factory as cast trick flow head and you could just do a little bit of work to it. Maybe you could get 10 or 15 or 20 CFM out of it real quick by just doing some bowl blending and stuff. All stuff that you could do at home with the, you know, cheap porting equipment, which you can get from Summit, and um, pick up maybe most of that for next to nothing. That's also a good choice. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, I know it's the end of the video, and you guys, before you take off and go, <laughs> go watch Cletus or somebody else, I want you to do this for me. Couple things. First of all, share. Share this with somebody else. Let them know what you're watching. Let them know there's a lot of cool stuff over here. Obviously, like, and I want you to subscribe. But most of all, I want you to comment. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to let me know what kind of successful combination, 302, 347, 331, I don't care. What kind of combination have you guys run that's worked really well? That way I can take a look at that, think about testing it later on. Here's what I think about on this test. First of all, Brodex heads, they work well. The single plane, dual plane thing, always kind of a trade-off. I really like that funnel web. It's really tall though, so if you got hood clearance problems, it's definitely not gonna fit, but it does make lots of power. Now on the other side, CNC ported heads versus ass cast heads, typical kind of deal. You gotta make sure you have enough motor to take advantage of what those heads have to offer. That's it. Thanks for watching, guys.